There are few things more magnificent and awe-inspiring on this planet than the forests. A collection of billions of trees that have each stood for hundreds of years, creating the foundation on which complex life can establish itself. Forests from the Russian taiga to the Amazon rainforest supply Earth with the oxygen necessary for life, provide food and shelter to over 80% of the planet's terrestrial biodiversity, and support the livelihoods of 1.6 billion humans. The sheer size of these biomes have made them appear as an almost limitless resource, with people believing that their actions have no effect on the overall ecosystem. However, with the global population approaching 8 billion in the next few years, it's clear that humanity's actions against the well-being of the forests are taking their toll, hurting biodiversity and speeding up the rate of climate change in the process. But just how important are the trees, and what can be done to protect them before it's too late? The world's forests are one of the biggest stabilizing forces in the fight against global climate change. The process of photosynthesis, where plants intake carbon dioxide and emit oxygen, is nowhere as prevalent as in the forests, which intake a net 7.6 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide every year. This atmospheric CO2 goes towards the formation of cellulose and lignin, the main building blocks of wood. By taking carbon from the air, and sequestering it in a solid form like wood, it slowly reduces the amount of atmospheric CO2. This CO2 can eventually make its way back into the atmosphere after the tree dies and the wood rots, but this is a slow natural process that will eventually lead to new trees that reabsorb the carbon dioxide. However, when humanity interferes with this cycle through deforestation, it swings the balance in the opposite direction. The process of deforestation is not a pretty one to observe. It starts with an extraction of valuable timber for use in construction and manufacturing, followed by a controlled burning of the remaining plant and animal life. This reaction of wood with fire and oxygen releases all of the carbon that had been so safely stored in a solid form, putting it back into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide, along with smoke and soot. The amount of carbon dioxide that deforestation in tropical forests has amounted to is roughly 4.8 billion metric tons, or about 10% of all global emissions. A majority of this deforestation is taking place in rapidly developing countries with abundant forests, like in Southeast Asia and Brazil. The Amazon has lost 17% of its forest cover to deforestation in the last 50 years. The island of Sumatra is even worse with an astonishing 85% of its rainforest lost. Overall, 18.7 million acres of forest are lost every year, an area of land larger than the country of Ireland. And in recent years, powerful leaders like Jair Bolsonaro, the president of Brazil, have been increasing the rates at which forests are getting cleared. Despite international warnings, certain nations across the globe have seen increasing levels of deforestation as their populations grow rapidly. Countries like Nigeria, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Brazil have seen large portions of their original forests clear-cut, with devastating effects to their unique biodiversity. For example, President Bolsonaro, upon taking office in 2019, reversed Brazil's policies on clearing the Amazon. Deforestation in Brazil, which had been decreasing for 20 years, suddenly saw a spike to 2008 levels, jumping almost 10% in just one year. This once protected land, supporting indigenous communities and the local wildlife, is instead getting used for cattle ranching. This is one of the worst trade-offs possible in slowing the rate of climate change. Cattle are an extremely inefficient use of the land when it comes to feeding people, producing approximately one pound of edible meat for every 16 pounds of feed it receives. Not to mention the amount of methane cattle produce, a greenhouse gas 84 times stronger than carbon dioxide over a period of 20 years. The deforestation in Brazil is definitely not in a good situation, but the islands of Indonesia are seeing it far worse. 
instead of cattle farms, the Indonesian rainforest is being converted to palm plantations, with over 14.6 million hectares of land being used primarily for palm oil. This oil is used in everything, from processed foods to baked goods to biodiesel, giving it an incredibly high demand in the global market. The main reason for these unsustainable rates of deforestation is, unsurprisingly, money. Developing countries see these forests as natural resources that they are entitled to use for economic growth instead of as vital ecosystems. Previous attempts to curb deforestation have proven unsuccessful in the past. Most of these strategies involved sympathizing with the trees and forest animals losing their homes, a sad reality that most logging companies saw as just the cost of business. Some success has been seen in Western nations, with companies investing research and time into sustainable timber harvesting. Here, the forest is maintained and trees are chopped sustainably, planting new saplings in their place. This strategy is remarkably successful in sustaining biodiversity and forest health, but has so far only been feasible in nations with the resources to monitor it. More recently though, a new strategy from the United Nations is putting a dollar value on the forests to incentivize developing governments to protect them. The program is known as Reducing Emissions from Deforestation and Forest Degradation, or REDD and it's the first of its kind to try to outcompete the market forces driving this deforestation. The plan is to pay developing nations a set amount for the amount of forest they leave standing. This payment will come from a central source, funded by wealthier nations as an investment in the Earth's forests. The more money governments agree to contribute, the larger the area of forests that will be protected. The price for these forests will be a delicate balancing act of being high enough to deter logging but low enough to be affordable and widespread. Now, this program is far from perfect. First and foremost, there are worries about the transparency of the government's receiving benefits. The nations with the most deforestation often have wide-scale corruption, making it hard to trust those in charge with large sums of money. Also, it may be that private companies still outcompete the REDD prices, making it even more profitable to deforest than before. Corruption and perverse incentives are frequent obstacles in designing any policy, and when designing a policy that will impact the entire world, it becomes increasingly tricky. However, the virtue in REDD lies in its new approach in the fight for the forests, treating them as a market commodity with more value alive than dead. With more international support and accurate monitoring, the REDD program may prove to be a golden solution to curb deforestation. There is no one solution to fix this issue, as with many issues humanity is currently facing in the climate crisis. The root of this problem lies with the way governments view the forests, not as a global collective of oxygen-producing, life-sustaining havens for biodiversity, but instead as natural resources, ripe for exploitation. For meaningful change to happen, it will take more than recycling paper and buying sustainable bamboo furniture. It will take more than tree hugging, and it will take more than mass sharing pictures of homeless orangutans. It will take governments that recognize the forests not as Brazilian trees, or Nigerian trees, or Indonesian trees, but as trees that belong to every citizen of Earth. In our next episode, we would like to discuss a somewhat controversial topic known as climate debt. This focuses on the imbalance of those who have contributed the most to climate change versus those who will suffer the most from its effects. Join the discussion in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends and family to support Planet Zero.